at South Lafourche High School, played at Northwestern State, and led the New Orleans Saints to their first ever winning season and playoff appearance in 1987. Took the Saints to the playoffs in 1991 and 92 as well. He was inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame in 1998, and he now serves as talk show host and analyst for WWL 870 AM and the Saints Radio Network. Of course, the Saints are now 10 and 3 after their 31-13 pasting of Carolina, and they'll play at St. Louis this coming Sunday. Please give a warm quarterback club welcome to Bobby Yebeer. Bobby. Thank you, Ken. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, Ken always calls me in August. Uh, when can you do this? When can you come? You know, so many hours in a day. And it seems like I always come at this time, and it's appropriate because with all these great high school coaches and great high school teams, uh, I still reflect on and talk about winning the state championship in 1977, uh, what, 36 years ago? And, uh, and John Forcade still can't, can't get over that we beat him in the quarterfinals. He said, yeah, y'all cheated. He said, yeah, you, you know, whatever, John, or whatever. And I said, no, my, uh, my uh, uh, great uncle, George A. Bear, said, yeah, he had that umpire from Alexandria. He had a, a, a trunk load of filet speckled trout and raw and so we, we, we took care of Don Galea. But again, uh, thanks for having me. And, well, what more can you say about uh, what the Saints are doing, Sean Payton being back, and Drew Brees, and uh, they're the best of the best. This is great times if you're a Saints fan. Uh, you look too late turning the corner, even what LSU has done uh, since, you know, basically the past decade. But I hope we appreciate what Drew Brees is doing as a quarterback, because I, I don't know, this next guy that comes in, I mean, you can hit the lottery. Uh, 49ers went from Joe Montana to Steve Young, and we all know Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers, who I think is the best. Um, just look how the Packers miss him. Because he can extend plays and mobility, and then you look to Peyton Manning, uh, to Andrew Luck. So maybe uh, you know, we might have someone like that uh, to come after Drew, but he's truly amazing how he leads the team, how he handles pressure. Um, now we are a dome team. But, you know, fans to, to try not to get the Huda Nation discouraged. I said, look at the glass half full instead of half empty. Look where we're at. That game was a playoff game last night. Uh, I mean, if you don't fall on your face now, it could be a trap game going to St. Louis against the Rams considering how they're structured along, uh, you know, offensive and defensive line and, and how they play. But when you look at where the Saints are at now, they're in great position. Uh, be the number two seed. Have a first round bye, and I don't know, it's common sense a lot easier to get to the Super Bowl if you only got to win two games instead of three. And, uh, you know, then there's hope. I mean, you look at Seattle. If you have to go back to Seattle, you think about this. Now, there's one thing about the World Series or baseball or NBA playoffs, whatever you got a series or like the best of seven, normally, I mean, uh, you know, you might get an upset, but you're not going to win the series. But the NFL is just one game. You know, we need the ball to bounce our way. And it could happen. I mean, a lot of people didn't think uh, Auburn would beat Alabama. Just look where Auburn's at right now in the national championship. Look what occurred against Georgia and Alabama. So you have to have breaks. Coaches will tell you this. They always reflect back when you're a champion. There's always a handful of plays, sometimes even a couple of handful of plays. That's the difference whether you won or not. I mean, myself in 1977, uh, how we were able to beat Archbishop Shaw, beat uh, Tommy Wilcox and Bonneville. Uh, listen, if we played those two teams 10 times, I think we'd have won uh, probably two, maybe three. But all you have to do is that one time, and then you have a great opportunity uh, to be a champion. And the ball might start uh, bouncing our way. We're the only team right now in the NFL without a defensive touchdown. You know, a pick six or a scoop and score or a punt or a kick return. And if you look, the year we won the Super Bowl, we had seven defensive touchdowns. Now, Darren Sharper had about four or five of those. But so, uh, you know, you just have to put yourself in the position to have those opportunities and maybe the ball uh, starts bouncing your way. All I know also is that great players have to play great. For instance, uh, look how awesome uh, Camp Jordan was last night. Did you even hear his name again in the Seahawks game? No. I mean, uh, for instance, 
Okay, Malcolm Jenkins, I'm bragging on Malcolm Jenkins. This is his best year for well, man in Seattle, George Malcolm Jenkins. And then even Keenan Lewis, you're paying big bucks to Keenan Lewis. Uh, come on, uh, great players have to play great. In that game, uh, Russell Wilson had a perfect quarterback rating against Keenan Lewis or Malcolm Jenkins. Well, look how the impact they had last night. I, I seen Keenan Lewis, you know, blow up, uh, you know, two screens. That uh, Carolina's thinking, we run these plays, this is going to be, you know, yards after the catch. Look at the Jets game, the success they had in those type of places. So you can see it's getting better. And again, what more can you say about uh, Rob Ryan and what he's done? We're all hoping Rob Ryan will get the defense at least to the middle of the pack. I know Coach Payton always emphasizes his scoring defense. Uh, that's unbelievable. And that, that was one thing on the Greg Williams, too. Uh, you know, holding someone to 19 points. It's amazing how efficient our offense is since 2006, along with the Patriots and the Packers, scoring 28 points to, to low 30s. But looking at that scoring defense, that's how I think we have a chance against anyone. The scoring defense stays where it's at. Look how that game started last night. Come on, they want the fans to cheer. What are you going to cheer about when all of a sudden Carolina has the ball? We had the ball like a little over a minute in the first quarter. You can't just scream to be screaming, but you know what? Bit but don't break, the score was only 6-0. to zero. You know, and coming into the game, Carolina was as good as it gets, red zone offense and defense, and also third down offense and defense. When you look at the final numbers, uh, those numbers don't lie. It's amazing the parity in the NFL when you have great teams. When you, when you look at those numbers, you know, people might say, oh, well, stats bore me. But you can kind of see how the game unfolds to realize what actually occurred and why the Saints won. I mean, 6-0, that's nothing. Before you know it, now the Saints are winning 7-6. to six. Then you look, it's halftime, and now it's 21-6 to six. to show you how good Carolina was. They had only given up two touchdowns in the first half of the whole season. The Saints scored three touchdowns in the second quarter. Now, it's just amazing how explosive, and uh, some of the fans get a little spoiled, and, uh, and we all get uh, a little spoiled because of expectations. We were hoping, hey, look, Sean Payne's coming back. I thought he'd make the difference, definitely. Uh, for sure, two, maybe three more wins. So you go from seven to 10 wins, man, that, that, that's a great season. But now you look at the expectation where the Saints are at, you're like, man, you know, uh, 12, 13 wins. Because uh, you can see that opportunity and you want to take advantage of it where the Saints are at uh, right now. And I think the bottom line, if you look at last year's defense, what we're doing now with Rob Ryan is that the players believe in Rob Ryan's system. That they believe that Rob Ryan's going to put them into position to succeed. You know, that trust factor. Okay, I, I'm going to put you in position to succeed, but i got to trust you that you're going to get the job done. And Junior Gillette's taking advantage of that opportunity. Uh, you look at Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan has gotten better. He might be the best number one draft pick as of late, considering his progression where he's at. I think uh, Kenny Vaccaro, uh, well, he's about the best thing that come out of Texas lately, the University of Texas, that is. And, and, and what he's done, Kenny Vaccaro's the real deal. Uh, I can't think of the, uh, the safety name now with Seattle. I mean, the, the, that might be the two best uh, potential safeties uh, that, that's come out of Texas and their impact in the NFL, but, uh, it, it, you know, looking at uh, the Rams and the, where they're structured, Jeff Fisher, uh, you know, we got to win in the trenches. Uh, to be honest, where I take questions, uh, I look at the Saints this year, that I think the best team we ever had was when we became the new greatest show on turf in 2011, and we all know that San Francisco game. To show you how good the Saints were, I mean, you're down by 17 points in the second quarter, you take the lead twice under five minutes, and then we still lost. I think that the ball bouncing your way, wherever you want to call it, uh, we were better that year than the year we won the Super Bowl. And, and I, uh, you know, people say, oh, the Saints aren't a good road team. Uh, that's another thing. Now you could say cold weather, road game, or whatever, but since 2006, only the Patriots have a better road record than the Saints. Now since 2009, the Saints are the number one road team in the NFL. The perception is they're not a good road team is because you look at the cold weather games and then you look at uh, what happened in the playoffs against the Seahawks and the 49ers where, and, and I look at, come on, shame on, on the defense. In those games you scored 32 and 36 points and you lose. 
Uh, he's supposed to win those games. So that's why I'm still optimistic. Uh, we would have to go to Seattle because I think the veterans and the leadership that we have. But looking right now where we're at, uh, the offensive line is not as good as when we won the Super Bowl or when we were the new uh, greatest show on turf. Uh, the one that's been most steady, Zach Street, the right tackle. I think he's dealing with an ankle injury uh, right now. Charles Brown, it is what it is. You know, people, they call in the shows and they say, well, oh, we got to get uh, better linemen and, and this and that. And why did we pay this guy that? I say, well, you can't pay everybody. Uh, I, I think uh, Jari Evans right now, Jari Evans is playing good, but we need him to play great, uh, like a pro bowler. Uh, not necessarily all pro. Uh, ben Grubbs called this a big drop off uh, from Carl Nix. He hasn't played as well as he's played uh, with the Ravens. But you can go across the line. We all know this, Brian De La Puente, an overachiever. How can you not cheer if a guy like Brian De La Puente, this guy's been cut four times considering he's fighting. And, uh, and I thought that was one thing overall. Look at the protection. I already protected Drew Brees last night. Uh, was unbelievable. They're going to catch a lot of the flag. But again, like Brian De La Puente, he's not as good. Uh, when, you look, when you look back at the Saints centers with Charles Bentley, uh, when you look at uh, Jeff Fain, how he became the, the highest paid center when he went to Tampa, Jonathan Goodwin. But, you know, you got to make adjustments. And, and uh, I'm glad to see Colson have a great game. You know, that's another thing people don't realize since 2006 that Marcus Colston, if you look at touchdown pass, he's probably the best tight end in the NFL to never make a Pro Bowl. I don't know if he ever will because how Drew spreads the ball around. Uh, but when you look at Larry Fitzgerald, uh, Megatron, Calvin Johnson, and Antonio Gates, who's the original, like, kind of like, I guess Tony Gonzalez basketball tight end, the only ones that have more touchdowns than him since 2006. So uh, the Saints are, are, are the most unselfish team I've ever been around. There's no uh, prima donnas. Uh, you know, you have to hit on free agency. Uh, you look at Hawthorne, he's not hurt, coming from Seattle, Curtis Lofton. And they're just playing like a team, and it's, it's been an unbelievable ride. And, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen, uh, but why not the Saints in the Super Bowl in New York? Uh, put, it to, put it to you this way. If the Saints go to the Super Bowl in New York, I hope the weather obviously is not bad. But if they're not, if they're not there, I hope there's a blizzard. <laughs> where, where those big executives, all these CEOs, they can't fly in and out. The airport's closed. So, uh, but, but the reason why they had the Super Bowl in New York, you build a new stadium, and, and twofold, the, the headquarters in New York, obviously NFL, and you build a new stadium, so they give you an opportunity uh, to have the game. But uh, hopefully we'll have the Super Bowl, the tricentennial uh, for New Orleans, and that comes about, and I think we will. Uh, to me, it's a no-brainer uh, to host that Super Bowl. But, uh, boy, it's great to uh, be a Saints fan, uh, an LSU Tiger fan, I know my dad still takes the approach though. Here he's had a couple of strokes, he's had heart surgeries. He's 75 and a half. And I couldn't believe he's at that Texas A&M LSU game. I go, why don't you stay home and watch it on TV? I, I said, you can see every game now on TV. He goes, oh no, I, I wanna be in the stands. And I said, you're gonna end up, something's gonna happen, you end up dying in that stadium. And he said, well, I'd rather be there than in my living room. So to show you, and he'd always tell me, he says, well, he said, I hope the Saints win, but LSU has to win. He, he is that uh, a diehard. And, and I was telling Deke Bellavia, my partner, uh, he, he said one joke. Uh, uh, he told me about Tulane. But he said, Dad, boy, Tulane's doing pretty good, you know, and stuff. And, uh, you know, we, I know Coach CJ, we're all excited about what Tulane's doing. And, uh, and I told him, yeah, that was a big win against East Carolina. And my dad goes, East Carolina, that's not even a state. How are you going to brag about that? <laughs> credit for nothing, uh, but again, it's just, uh, that's the way football fans in Louisiana are, so uh, any questions? It, it was interesting to see the snow games all yesterday, especially up in, like, in Detroit, so if the Saints do get to the Super Bowl in New York in February and have a deep snow game... I don't think we win. I don't think we have a snowball chance in hell. <laughs> we can't run the ball. I mean, I don't... I, mean, I, I don't... I can tell you one game I remember I was telling Dean because of the temperature. If y'all remember this old school, the San Diego Chargers with Dan Fouts had went 
Yeah, went to Miami the week before. They all like it's, it's hot. It was 70, I think high 70s. Then they got to go to Cincinnati, and you count the wind chill difference. I want to say it was like 150 some degrees different. The wind chill was like minus 60 or something. But then Fouts is not even a football anymore. I, I guarantee you the Bengals go to the Super Bowl. The Chargers would have beat uh, the Bengals eight out of ten times in a controlled environment, uh, but they lost. No, I, I, the weather's bad. I, I, listen, if you look how you travel, great defense is always travel well, and if you can run the ball and, and in the trenches. Uh, that's why, I mean, I, I look at Carolina, the way, the way they structure, at times I think more consistently, and it happened the first game in Carolina, the final score was 12-7 against Seattle. I think it would give Seattle a better game in Seattle than we would over the long haul because the way they structure it. All right, thank you.